Hello, uh, so we're members of Bristol North Branch Socialist Party. Um, normally we get together at the weekend and hold a stall out in the street uh, to try and raise awareness uh, about the Socialist Party, but obviously uh, at the moment we're not able to do that, so we're just filming a quick video um, to talk about this week's paper. So the Socialist Party is uh, a fighting group um, looking for better alternative to capitalism uh, and for us, that means democratically organizing and planning the economy in response to the needs of the many rather than the profit of the few. Um, so we're going to just talk quickly about this week's paper, uh, which is The Socialist. So The Socialist is produced every week. It's written by workers across the country. Uh, it's really interesting with a load of uh, varied um, perspectives of a worker's struggle. Um, so I'll just Tom, do you want to talk through about the, the cover article that we've got this week? Yeah, I think we've got a great front page article this week. It's written by Rob Williams, who's the, the industrial organiser for the Socialist Party. And it really focuses around two important dates in the calendar of the workers' movement that we've had in the, the last week. Those are, are May Day, uh, the 1st of May, a celebration of the, the history of the, the workers' movement, but also bringing together organizations like trade unions and other campaigners uh, to, to fight for the future uh, and throughout the paper we also have a number of greetings from workers and union branches uh, you know celebrating May Day. Uh, the other event is Workers Memorial Day which is usually organized uh, around the, the slogans uh, remember the dead and fight for the living and it's about this idea of workers needing to defend health and safety at work to stop bosses putting profits ahead of the, the interests of uh, working people. And I think we're seeing that at the moment with the lack of protective equipment uh, that workers on the, the front line and key workers are, are facing at the moment. And Mike, I think you were, uh, were saying yeah. something about that. Yeah, we, um, well, we've seen uh, in Bristol examples of where there's been loads of deaths in care homes um and you've got the staff who haven't got any protective clothing it's it's minimal just sort of aprons plastic aprons that they've been having and we, that's been going on for six weeks and they've now the government finally decides to come round to actually oh you can have some tests and also you can have some protective clothing but they, they still haven't got it they're, they're still and you can see from the stories in the paper this week um, that people don't, haven't got all this stuff. They, they talk about it and they say it's coming, but in reality it's not. And what all they're bothered about is whether in fact they can uh, get people back to work and make some money out of them. They're not actually bothered about health and safety for um, older people. They're just saying they're worthless. Yeah, we, we haven't bothered with them, and um, that, that's not what's important. Um, and it, it's just a frustrating thing, a way you see people, uh, and it's thousands of people, and the figures have just started to come out. But they've known the figures all along. Uh, they are all, all been there in the statistics, and they could have got them out six weeks ago and seen what has happened. It's no surprise. Yeah, I mean, obviously that's that's true, Mike. And I think also the the problem is that everyone's hating this, aren't they? You know, I mean, it's a horrible situation, and everyone's absolutely dying to get back to normal. But we've got to make sure that that's not an excuse for um, people to be able to take ad advantage of um, people. And you know, you've got businesses who are seeing their their profits dwindle, and they're, they're not making as much money as they normally do. And so they're, they're trying to push to make everyone go back to to work as as soon as possible. Possible, but that can't be at the expense of people's health and, and safety in, in our communities. And I'm, I'm a teacher and, you know, at the moment, obviously, every day I'm, I'm missing um, my class. I want to get back to normal and to be able to teach those children and to, to check in with them and see how they're doing. But 
I don't want to do that at the expense of bringing them into school and potentially spreading the, the virus and, and making a, a second wave. And, uh, you know, I think it's a horrendous idea to push people to try and get back to what normal is again without actually looking and checking, is it safe to do so? How are we going to ensure that social distance is, is in place? So many jobs rely on face-to-face -face contact, people being close to others and we can't have that if that is going to uh, put people at risk and, and cause a, um, a bigger health crisis and I think we just need to make sure, you know, like like the like the article says, that we're, we're not pushing to, to go back to normal until safety is in place. And that safety can only be assured by those workers and those families, those communities who are actually facing what is going on. And of course, that has to be linked up with the trade unions who are the ones who are actually at, at the chalk face and really thinking about the, the safety of, of their members and workers. Um, Roger, what do you think? Right. Workers uh, need to take uh, collective action to, dis uh, to ensure that their workplaces are safe. And if they're unsafe, then they uh, need to uh, be able to work collectively together to walk off those sites. Because as a unit, those workers are much safer and are much more able to enforce their uh, position on intransigent managers at a local and a national uh, level. Section 44 of the Employment Rights Act says that uh, workers have a duty and a right to walk off an unsafe workplace if that is what they are faced with. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, we have the anti-trade union laws and that's why I emphasize that workers need to be involved in a trade union and to work collectively together in order to defend themselves and to defend themselves collectively. May Day this year, we've got to send out a clear message to the bosses and to the Tory government. Collective workers and trade union action is the way forward in order to defend workers, in order to defend workplaces and make sure that workers have safety before they return to work and that those workplaces like that, that aren't essential, like many of the building projects and construction sites that are going on across the country, that those workers can take the opportunity together to walk off those sites, defend their terms and conditions, and to defend their right not to get sick, not to get COVID-19, and not to die. And I think this government is guilty of mass murder of many workers because of the, the threat that they are putting those workers in. Workers in London on the bus uh, uh, buses have managed to take collective action to ensure proper cleaning and also to ensure that the front doors of those buses were closed in order to protect those workers and to ensure their safety at work in what is a very trying and dangerous time for workers across the country. Let's work collectively together. This is a great article. I encourage you to read the Socialist newspaper and let's go forward. Thank you very much. Yeah, and I think for, for thousands of workers across the country and across the globe, um, this crisis has made it incredibly clear uh, the ways in which capitalism is putting workers at risk. Um, and so, especially in the UK with um, the Labour Party uh, now under the leadership of Keir Starmer and the Conservatives in power, now more than ever, um, there's a need to get involved in a fighting political organisation. And for us, that's the importance of being part of the Socialist Party. So if you found this interesting, we'd really urge you to uh, have a read of The Socialist. You can get it online, uh, socialistparty.org.uk. You can subscribe uh, to it as a digital or a paper copy, um, £4.50 for a month subscription. You get a copy every week uh, or it's £1 per issue. Um, or alternatively, if you can spare something, uh, you can also donate on our website. Um, and we'd love to, if you're in the Bristol area, we'd love to see you in person once this is all over, or you can join in on our digital Zoom meetings, um, which are on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, if you're in a different area, of course, we've got loads of branches across the country. So yeah, that's all for this week, I think. Um, thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks for joining. Yeah,